Scott, we have a bunch of uh, living soil, Jadam, KNF enthusiasts watching right now, and I know you run a lot of, uh -oh. uh, <laughs> you, you do a lot of experimentation, and so can you talk about maybe, like, like I love that you, I don't know if you still have your home grow, <laughs> but like, it seems like you were always experimenting there to, you know, prove or disprove things. So can you talk about yeah. some things that you've been experimenting and what you've learned, whether it's uh, related to pests or plant growth, but generally the kind of ecosystem of microbes, plant roots and plants and soil and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, deep. I guess deep. I guess, yeah, I guess to clarify, um, yeah, my wife Sarah and I, we we use our personal home grow to really just go bananas on. And that's one of the reasons why I rarely show it is because I don't think the mindset of the average viewer from the internet can really wrap their head around what we're doing. They just see that there's mold in my garden and they say, I don't know shit, but they don't understand that we're purposely putting in there so that we can get repetitions on how to defeat it so that I can confidently go into a facility and fix things. And so, yeah, so... The last run that we did, we were, you know, I purposely let them get moldy so we could clear it out. The run before that, um, I took in some spider mite infested clones and duped it out with those. And then, um, and uh, so that's what we do because, you know, my job is fixing problems. And I come from a sports background. So if you're going to be asked to hit home runs in the World Series, you better do some batting practice. So um, the stuff that we've seen has, pretty much completely removed any fear of a problem from us just because we've seen such horrific problems and navigated people out of them using living soil techniques um, to kind of tie in what Kevin was saying earlier is we come into these facilities that have a dysfunctional um, attachment to genetics and there's a lot of times we come in with a new cultivator to renovate a property and the property owners insist that they maintain genetics so we've had a lot of experience taking clones that were contaminated with things like mycobutanol and Avid and all the things that you're not at all supposed to use, but during the times of problem they did use. And so what we found is if you have good mineral density in your soil and you have high populations of good soil food web organisms, all the things that tissue culture claims, nature also has a strategy for. Um, and so, you know, if you have really high biological populations, if there is a virus in the plant, the plant has the ability to kind of quarantine it to a branch and it'll form like this really weird callus, almost like it has a, a like scar tissue. You know, a, a lot of the things that tissue culture claims that is the benefit, good living soil biology and good mineral density can also provide those same benefits. Um, there was one particular farm that had plants that were, you know, coated in systemic fungicides. They were treated with avid, things like that. Um, and we actually put them into a good living soil system, vegged them out. We hacked out the, um, that first biomass that came out and threw it away. That next round of biomass that came out, we cloned, ran through propagation and into the flowering, and all that flower tested clean. So in about a, um, you know, six week period, we were able to clean some plants up, get them ready for production and the flower tested clean, which actually kind of blew the mind of the lab. They all, all the labs said that there was no way that was going to work. We didn't know we were just tinkering. Um, and so I think there's a lot of untapped potential out there that people have no real idea exists because, you know, the pe the people that, did that study they definitely don't tell anybody about it and that was back in uh that was in like mid 2017 when we did that and you mm -hmm. know that farm is definitely not sharing that information because that's a tremendous advantage in the market if you can clean up problems in a few weeks you're not going to share that with your neighbor we we did that with the, with when the a few years ago with before before uh, dark heart said that they found the, the virus rick crumb was a virologist i don't know if you know rick but Crum and a couple guys from, uh, I would say UCLA brought us plants and Alan Atkinson and I had a conversation about using uh, biologically driven methodologies to increase natural resistance and would it work against a virus. And so next thing I know, I got some virus uh, plants with me 
and I was able to do the tests and we were able to get the plant back to functionality to where it had no change because we had already had labs on it prior. So I knew what it did when it was clean. And then we saw what it did when it was affected. And then we saw what it did after the cleansing, but it didn't remove the virus. It just brought it to a level that was workable. So we kind of, we, we used an analogy of, it was kind of like the way Magic Johnson was able to get HIV to a level that it was almost non-detectable and non uh, invasive in his life. It doesn't change the fact that he still holds it in his body. And so TC doesn't change the fact that good biologically driven methods of production are, to me, are the, the best way to get a plant's resistance high. And, and I think that it helps shed and scrub issues. But TC is, is by far the only, you only it's, you're not going to get that virus problem, any virus out of the plant completely. You'll just get it to a workable level. And what we found was when we took those plants and then put them into any other environment other than that biologically driven one back into like a chemical situation, the biofactors that allowed that to function weren't present. And we don't know which ones they were because the, you know, it's too complex. It's a combination, not a single thing. And the stress would then, if the plant got overheated, if it had uh, too much salinity, you would see it start to exhibit these viral traits. And I didn't get a chance to do the, the, any work with them after that point, but I would love to have seen the, the change in a viroid issue within the plant, meaning how much obstruction was in the vascular bundles relative to what was there prior. So uh, I'm someone who is like my farm is biologically driven and I don't seem to have any issues up top and I'm grateful for that. But I do a lot of containment where I don't let anybody go up the hill. I don't have any neighbors and I make sure that the, my mineral density is as high as I can drive it so that the plant has as much natural response as possible. But I still think that, you know, science in, in, prep, in preservation of things that are damaged and to protect the nursery operations, the tool to hold and clean. I don't see us ever going away from it. Yeah, and um, I definitely advocate tissue culture. I, I wasn't necessarily saying it's definitely a tool that needs to be implemented and mm -hmm. you know can provide great benefit. I was just necessarily saying that like nature has a lot of strategies for these things. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Mm -hmm. And I fully agree because you and I've had this conversation many times about. Once the bottom end is right, the plant seems to work out the problem pretty well. Once, once we have the correct nu nutrient balance, the plant isn't exhibiting stress symptoms that bring insects on. Once our, once our epidural layers are adequately built, we, we don't seem to have probing insects penetrating and causing the problems. But the, the thing is that I know that it's a, it's a secret you want to keep for, the, for yourself because it's a market advantage. But the situation is that you're, you're, I mean, that's why I try to give information out all the time. It, it, it's that we're in the beginning of building an industry and that if, if more of us survive, the better. And what that'll do is it'll allow a, a, a much better unity as an industry. You have the ability to have success. Success builds finances. Finances build lobby. Lobby builds influence. And that's what we don't have. We don't have any of these things. And so a lot of this information, that's why, you know, these type of uh, uh, little symposium we're on today is killer because it's all unfiltered shit, but you get it in a real opinion. And I think, you know, that, that's the part that has to get shared is that the, the big picture has to be shown and then the details that has to be worked out individually. Yeah, if we can only, yeah, if, if only everybody would get together and get along. <laughs> no, yeah, no, but so. it's, 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 it's a process. It's, <laughs> we're getting along right now, you know, so we, we've all, all of us have had common interests on projects that we wanted to see succeed and we try to do the best we can. And I think that's what the, the, the public has to see, meaning the grower public is that so much of this stuff is complicated and a lot of times the only way you're going to succeed is if you share the information. The larger corporations, yeah. they all believe they have proprietary IP. Each one lets me know, you know, we have all this top secret shit. And I'm like, it's a fucking injector. It's not that it's top secret. A, yeah. Yeah. No, hybrid, state and, of the art, all these, you know, yeah. we're about to show the world, you know, we're I mean, it's it. crazy. Yeah, I'm like... It's, 
you, you ain't gonna show anybody shit. And uh-uh. If I see a paint sprayer in there, I'm gonna fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>